Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. Recently, I've been searching around for a mixer to handle just my most basic desktop mixing needs. Things like recording voiceovers and listening to simple playback off my computer. Now, there are an absolute ton of options on the market for desktop mixing devices, and I'm leaning pretty heavily towards just buying something like a Motu AVB uh, Ultralight or something else with networked audio capabilities that can be an interface as well as a desktop mixer. But that's all for another video. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a bit of retro technology that you may have run into in the past. You might see currently still in installed sound systems that are older, or you might just notice them listed for sale on eBay all the time, which is where I pick this one up. They range from about $15 up to $80 depending on the condition. I got this one which is in excellent condition physically anyway. From the outside it looks to be in great shape for only $30. It might be old, but it's got all the features that I currently need for a basic desktop mixer. Of course, I'd love other features, but this one ticks a lot of the boxes uh, as far as my needs go, and it might be useful to other folks out there on a really limited budget. So I thought it'd be fun to give it a try for a while. So let's check it out. The Shure M267 Professional Mixer. Yes, okay, I know. It's not the most exciting piece of equipment you've probably ever seen. And there is a very, very good chance that after using this for a few weeks, if I decide this form of mixer works in this application for me, it'll probably get replaced with the new Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 or 6, which I've had my eye on for a desktop and portable mixer. But for right now, for $30, nothing else on the market even comes close to the features, uh, the quality, and the reliability that this unit offers, and it's gonna let me see just how well this type of form factor works, how often I use the various features, and what other features would be really helpful for me. Uh, a lot of this I already kinda know from doing research about the new Mix Pre 3 and 6, but this will be a fun way to kinda test the waters. I really wanted to try to see what kind of quality we could get on the lowest possible budget as well. There are a lot of mixers, both desktop and even some portables out there in the sub $50 or sub $100 uh, category. There's all sorts of import stuff now, and, and if you're under $100 or around the $50 mark, there's a ton of options, but not many of them provide the features that I'd really want to see in a mixer. They're generally just little basic mixers. So let's take a look at the features real quick. We've got transformer isolated inputs. That's huge, especially for me. I connect up questionable gear sometimes for testing. I'm interfacing with other uh, devices and transformer isolation on those inputs just makes that easier for me to do. Uh, the ability to power this unit from either uh, 120 volt AC wall power, uh, external DC, it's a 30 volt external DC, but it's got the barrel jack for the input there, or uh, internal batteries. That's a really awesome feature that I might use, you never know. Uh, transformer isolation on the outputs, again, that's huge when you're connecting up to other equipment, other people's equipment, record decks, things like that. Uh, having those transformer uh, isolated outputs is always helpful. Phantom power, uh, switchable on and off, and also defeated automatically if you switch the individual input into line level input. That's really nice if you're connecting older or even just more consumer grade line level equipment in for testing or for use, that you're not gonna uh, damage those. Uh, if you remember to switch it into line level, of course, uh, that'll automatically defeat the phantom power in those channels. So that's a real bonus for me. Uh, the test tone generator, that's something I use all the time and it's really helpful for calibrating uh, this unit to another piece of equipment and also really helpful for slating video records once in a while. This mixer is a mono output and that is just fine for me. 99% of the stuff that I do here uh, in this context is mono anyway. It's for YouTube, it's voiceover, spoken word, and I want to also reference back in mono just so I know that things are summing and working well together in that context for delivery. So for this particular uh, setup, not having stereo is not a big deal. Adjustable input limiters. Now this is huge because a lot of small mixers come with a limiter uh, that you can turn on or off, but this one you can actually set the threshold by going through a little procedure and adjusting a knob on the bottom of the unit, and that lets you set the threshold on those input limiters uh, to work for your needs. So that's really nice. 
So as you can see, this mixer has a lot going on for $30, and one of the coolest parts is the documentation of a mixer of this quality. We've got full schematics still available and actually a full parts list of replacement parts uh, should something go wrong with this. Now, I don't know how available all those parts are currently, but it is really nice to have that kind of documentation with a piece of audio equipment. Let's move on. Let's take a look first. Let's pop this open, see what's inside it, see how it's built, what kind of quality we're talking about. And then we'll talk a little bit about how I'm going to use it and we'll set it up here on my desk and see if it works. I have yet to actually pass signal through this. I've only powered it on when it came in the mail. I plugged it in to make sure it actually powered on. But right now, this is a complete unknown. It might not work at all. So we'll find that out together. Let's check it out. So this is the battery compartment and let's pop that open first and those are just a quarter turn. You could do that with a coin probably. And there's your battery compartment. That's uh, for three nine volt batteries. That's pretty neat. It already smells uh, pretty vintage and pretty interesting. So I'll leave that aside for now, but pretty cool. I believe they at one point sold a battery pack that fit into this. And if I can find that, I'll link it in the video here. things inside are starting to release themselves. So the bottom panel is probably not the way to go first. Let's pop off. The side is only a couple of Phillips head. This is gonna be cool. This is already pretty cool looking. Ta-da! Oh, this is actually this is actually metal. Oh, the Dave Jones uh, sniff test there. That definitely smells vintage. That is nice. So we'll take a quick poke around. And what was I? I was inadvertently disconnecting uh, this fellow here, but that's literally just a little metal loop, just a little metal hoop that comes from under and over the channel four module uh, to separate the output side from the input side. Uh, each one of these, and this is a lot of old school through hole technology. Let's see if we can find a date here real quick. Possibly 35th week of 81. That would make sense. Uh, for the age of this unit. Yes, we've got an LM339 uh, chip here that's uh, 81 as well, 32nd week of 81. Um, yeah, 26th week of 81. 1980. Looks like 81, so probably built in 80, late 81 early 82. I, I don't see anything later than 81, 18th week of 1980. So I don't want to stumble uh, through this piece by piece because the schematic and the parts list is actually available online, which I'll link here. But I just wanted to take a quick look inside and make sure I didn't see anything uh, crazy looking, didn't see any caps that were expanding or uh, burst or anything that looked weird or like it was going to pose a problem. And I don't. Everything looks good. For my money, this looks as good as you could hope. This looks really, really nice and clean. Nothing, you know, it's, it's worth plugging in and testing and going through it because it may very well work just fine. Of course, some of the caps may have dried up. We may find out that there's uh, inconsistencies due to that. But for the most part, everything looks really nice on this. We'll see if we can't get a look in there. It's, it's a single-sided board. And the only thing under there is that uh, battery compartment. That's literally the only thing in there. Uh, the bottom is all just uh, the 
leads poking through. So single-sided uh, population there on that board. You've got a, uh, a volume pot for each one of these. You've got a switch here, just a simple two position switch for the low cut filters to be engaged on each channel. Uh, there's a switch down on the bottom here that uh, engages the uh, the tone generator. And you've got your VU meter over here. We've got a little bit of circuitry to drive that. And not a whole lot else. Headphone amplifier. Over here we've got our four input transformers here. And those are just labeled T201, 202, 203, 204. And then we have underneath this uh, shield here, our output transformer, which feeds the main output and also the, uh, the line output here that's on uh, banana plugs, which is a handy little thing. And the reason the line output is on uh, banana plugs is that this unit can be connected up and can drive a uh, telephone line. So it's, it gives you the bare connections on line output uh, pins two and three and a screw terminal for ground. So if you need to interface with an old POTS, uh, plain old telephone system connection, uh, you can do that the old fashioned way with some bare wires. So that's the whole unit there. We've essentially got our input side, some transformers. We've got some switching and uh, control circuitry for the low pass uh, filter. We've got the uh, headphone amplifier, the VU meter. And other than that, it's a very simple unit. Uh, the only other features we haven't talked about here are what they call on this unit, you may, some old timers might remember, simplex uh, microphone power, and that's just another name for phantom power. And that's only 30 volts on this unit, which is the operating range. If you power it externally from uh, a wall wart or a power supply, you're putting in 30 volts is what it's looking for. With the three nine volts, we're gonna be right around 27 volts. So the phantom power is maxing out at 30 volts, which is plenty for most modern microphones. So let's put this guy back together and see if it works. I've grabbed a couple of things that I've got laying around to hook this up with. And the first one is what I'm using to record the DR05. I will hook that up to the mixer with an XLR to 3.5 millimeter connection. I've got an old PCDI laying around and that's got another three and a half millimeters. So that'll allow me to monitor uh, back from the laptop, which is really helpful. A pair of Sony uh, 7506s to use for the moment. I've got some short uh, XLR cables, and then I've got some of these, and these are what I use, or what I used to use a lot. I, I haven't done them in the last few videos just because of the logistics, but typically this is my voiceover microphone, the ES935 from Audio-Technica with the shotgun element on the 935 power supply. Uh, I've got an LP claw that I use to mount that on, and the mount is... And the mount is right here so that will be the setup so from a purely aesthetic standpoint this thing wins in my book hands down of course there's going to be folks who say i could have done everything i'm doing with this with this the tascam dr70 and yeah i can and more this records internally but man doesn't that look cooler like that i don't know i just think this is pretty neat so let's turn it on Hopefully nothing smokes or blows up. I, I, I have had it on before. All right, so it's on, very good. I'm gonna turn the recorder on. Right now I'm recording on the camera uh, with uh, the VP83 Shure mic, and it, it's, it's a ways away from me. It's probably three, four feet away. So as soon as this kicks on, uh, we'll switch the recording over to the Audio-Technica through the Shure into the task cam. Okay. So headphones in, headphone level, halfway. Master, halfway. Let's turn up the oscillator. And I'm seeing that. Cool. Now we're gonna flip back over to input one and I'm gonna put the headphones on because this should be our uh, 
Audio Technica mic up here, and let's see if we can see that on the. Yeah, I gotta get a longer cable for this, but let's see. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, wow. Okay. So the headphone out is pretty much off, 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 and then all on. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna just back the main. Like, oh, wow, yeah, geez, that's a. That's a stomping amount of input. So, I'll back this down a little bit. And there's some mechanical noise in the in the house here. I mean, this is not a this is not a good place to record audio whatsoever. It's a it's it's a pretty bouncy sounding room. But uh, as you can see, I am recording. I've got the limiter on here. So, hey, hey. Hey, yeah, I'm not seeing the limiter kick in. That's, and I'm gonna kind of gas the, the output here. Hey, hey, okay, there's the limiter coming on now. Hey, yeah, okay, yeah, you can definitely hear that kicking in. Hey, check one, two, two, two. Hey, hey. And we don't wanna do that normally. We're gonna go back up here to a reasonable input on the DR05 and turn this guy back down. Get that noise floor out of there. Hey, 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 yeah, check one, two, 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 hey, 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 check one, two, two, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. All right, so that's a pretty, bring this up a little more. That's a pretty good level. Hey, check one, two, I'm not hitting the limiter, and uh, at least in the headphones anyway, this sounds great. But let's play something off the YouTube uh, free library, no attribution, and just see what happens. So uh, you got your usual silent partner, uh, Gunnar Olsen, uh, all, the, all the people you're used to hearing from around YouTube. I'm just going to play the first one. Hell with it. Uh, it's channel two. Ooh, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Let's see what's up with that. Volume, maybe that was it. Nothing. Okay. So, that's, that's unfortunate. What could that be? Uh, so maybe input two is bad. Let's see. Uh, what do we got on our uh, laptop DI? There's nothing going on here that should be stopping this from happening. No mono. Uh, the pad is, is off right now. So we got some issues here for sure. All right, let's uh, let's see what we can do. All right, so I got it working. Turns out channel two is dead, so we will definitely uh, deal with that in an upcoming video. But channel three and four work, and I'm on the line input setting with no pad, just straight up basically. Now this is plenty for being able to uh, listen back to stuff uh, that's happening in the video or other things and then record uh, a voiceover to the DR05 with this microphone. That's pretty decent. And that low end rumble is, uh, that's with the low cut in and that's some like mechanical noise here in my building. You can hear if I take the low cut out. Ooh. So yeah, the idea isn't that I would be uh, recording voiceovers over top of this track. It's generally just that I'm going back and forth between recording something and wanting to continue editing the video. Uh, and I just want a way to be able to listen to that as a separate source in the same set of headphones without having something overly complicated or expensive in the mix. So I'm going to play around with this for a little while and then we'll try to fix channel 2 in an upcoming video and see what we can do with that. And... Ultimately, I think, like I said before, a mix pre, uh, the new mix pre series is going to be what replaces this and ends up on the desk. But uh, as I continue to move stuff around and get this monitor hooked up and see how I want to have things laid out, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to figure out exactly what uh, what we need going forward. I think I'm definitely going to buy the mix pre three. This is more just a, a fun look. If you have no budget whatsoever and you need a microphone mixer that can do some of the features I mentioned before, uh, especially something that can be run off battery power if you really need it. I mean, this is $30. Like you can, you can see on the, you know, I, I paid 
$30 plus shipping, but $30 for a mixer of this quality, uh, even if you only get three channels working, $10 a channel for a, a mixer, and then uh, you all know, if you've watched my videos, you know my uh, how much I like the Tascam DR05s, uh, same thing as a Zoom H1, those, you know, the small little recorders that you can get on eBay for like no money. They're really, you know, another 20 or $30. You can usually pick one of those up. If you're on like a real shoestring budget and you're just trying to set up your first mixer to be able to do some basic functionality, obviously I'm not recording into the computer. This isn't an interface. But just that basic functionality that you might need of being able to run, you know, a couple of different microphones and some line inputs into a mixer that has things like a tone generator and some limiting. And it's just a really good way to get into it. You know, these are nice uh, quality mixers for like no money. So this is not one of the units that is favored by recording enthusiasts and people in mod gear for better preamps and you know use old gear like this because the limiters sound good. This is not one of the units uh, people in that camp like to uh, work with. Uh, it, it's a utility mixer. I'm not suggesting that you run out and buy this for its vintage uh, goodness. It is very much just a utility piece. That's why they're $30. If these had amazing mic pre's or limiters that sounded, uh, you know, made you sound like John Bonham, uh, these would be more expensive. That's, you know, the, the eBay's been around forever now. I think I've been an eBay member since like 2001. So, you know, maybe you could do something with it in the studio. I'm not saying that. But if it was known for being some magical uh, preamp or uh, limiter or combination, I would definitely uh, highlight that. Almost every time I review anything, uh, somebody will message me and complain that I only do like spoken word or I think before I maybe did a little uh, bit of guitar recording, uh, just an acoustic guitar when I reviewed the DR-05. And, and somebody always wants me to record drums. They always want me to mic up a drum kit and record some fat beats uh, you know, through the preamps because that's the best way uh, to tell what a preamp sounds like. Uh, and you know, I, I don't have the facilities to do that. I do play drums. I, you know, I, I do have the ability, but I don't have the facilities to, uh, to set up uh, a drum kit, mic it, and then do a B comparisons with some industry standard mic pre's, um, to make it actually worthwhile doing it all. So take that for what it is. This is a utility mixer. It is very much uh, found in the world of corporate uh, installations, theaters, uh, things where there might be a lectern and a few other bits and pieces in a school, auditorium. Uh, this is very much that type of mixer. You know, it's worth a shot. If you're the kind of person that likes to experiment with this kind of stuff, $30 for four channels of mic pre's uh, with some limiters that are adjustable, buy it. I mean, seriously, buy one and tell me to, if it's any good. But I didn't buy it for its vintage-ness. I bought it because it, it looks cool and it's a cheap utility mixer and by every standard these were built as very professional quality mixers and for my needs doing this kind of stuff for youtube this is a decent little mixer i've got no problems keeping this on my desk and i just love seeing the uh the vu meter bouncing around so that's it for this time thanks again for watching let me know down below if you've used an m267 or any of the other shore models if you have bought them and tried to use them uh, for the mic prees i'd love to hear from you anything in this series let me know uh, how good or bad especially uh, they were. Was the limiter any good for recording drums or guitars or anything like that? Did you find a use for it? I'd be interested to know what your experience is if you do have the facilities to offer any sort of test tracks or anything you've recorded through it. You know, let me know and we'll uh, upload them so people can take a listen to those as well. But $30, sure, it's vintage, it's got a cool VU meter, and it works for the most part. That's it for the M267. Be sure to jump over to the website to take a look at the other links and things that go along with this video and more information, the schematic, all those links for the 267 will be over there. It's just easier for me to maintain links on my own website. Doing it on YouTube is a nightmare. I wish they would give us a better way to do that. But uh, yeah, so check out the website. Thank you as always to the folks who choose to support this channel, either through the affiliate links below, the affiliate links on the website, or most of all through Patreon. Uh, I can't tell you how much it means to have the support. Every dollar of support goes towards things like 
uh, buying gear like this for these videos. I'm hoping to do more retro tech videos in the future. There's some other folks doing them on YouTube that I really love watching, but they're not really in the pro audio space. The, I, I really love watching Techmoan. I love watching EEV blog. I love watching those guys that are taking stuff apart, uh, Big Clive and showing you what's going on. Big Clive's probably the closest because he's because he does lighting for PRG, which also do audio and very similar industry stuff. He does TV work, uh, but he's definitely towards the, uh, the lighting side of things. So far, I'd love him to get into doing audio videos as well, but uh, I'm hoping to continue doing that if people enjoy it. I like looking at this old stuff. It's a little bit of a challenge because finding this stuff, most audio gear is just heavy. There's not a whole lot of small stuff uh, especially retro or vintage audio gear. There's not much that's small and most of it needs like five other things in order to test. So like most of these old mixers and stuff, there's some sort of proprietary thing going on or they're meant to work with a companion piece of gear and that's all well and good, but uh, it's just physically difficult to, to buy them because of the shipping and to have the space to hang on to stuff while I try to find the other complementary pieces. A great example is I'd love to do a video about ADATs, ADAT machines, but trying to purchase enough gear to make a viable uh, ADAT recording setup is just, it's in a style, you need a room for it. You really do need like a Project Studio style room uh, to accommodate all that. So, you know, trying to figure that out as we go but just getting a hold of vintage gear is tough so bear with me and if you've got anything you want to send in i'll gladly pay the shipping if it's worthwhile if it's something that i can make a video about so let me know if you have anything like that that you'd like to send in for a retro tech video but that's it for the m267 i'll see you next time <laughs>